Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to create lace brushes. I did a set of lace brushes for an earlier video on multiple strokes on the same object and I used the lace brushes to illustrate that. One of the viewers asked how did I create them. I hope to answer that question in this video. Here are the lace brushes from my brush set that you can find on Gumtree. From rather intricate to a lot plainer, they all have one thing in common. They have black backgrounds and white strokes and shapes on top. The black will be the transparent part and the white will be the visible part. Let's get started with a, a new document. I create a new artboard. I set the document to be in pixels because I want to export to PNG and I set it from 300 DPI to 72 DPI. The DPI is not that important because we are not using the PNG file itself for a print and as a brush it is defined by the stroke width. Next I change the artboard to a smaller size so I set it to 1024 by 1024 and make sure the background is 100% black. I can just give the artboard a fill in black, I select the artboard and color it. The textured intensity brushes work with black as the transparent color and white and any shade of gray defining the visible areas, the grays being semi-transparent and the whites being fully visible. I start with a line as the trim of the pattern. I duplicate that and then use the note tool to add some detail. Seeing it is lace, it is really accurate. A little bit of variation makes it look more like a fabric than the absolutely straight line. Next up I add a circle, convert it to a curve so I can edit the notes and give it a teardrop shape. I could have used the teardrop tool right away. So used to starting out with a circle. So I'll modify the top notes and get my teardrop shape. I make sure the shape has no fill. That way I know that there's just the black fully transparent background and whatever I put on in white. I want the design to be centered. One of the easiest ways to achieve that is by turning the snapping on. The green line appears when the object is centered to the page. I adjust the shape and add a few circles to fill the teardrop. I scale them down a little bit to match. With the lace pattern you normally don't have huge holes. They're normally filled with patterns by the threads running through it. So I'm trying to fill the initial shape. This will be my base shape. I now make sure that the strokes are of similar widths. I want to use three different widths. One for the very thick border, one for the bigger shapes and finally a thin one for the details. The idea is to keep it a little bit more consistent than varying strokes all the way through the document. So turning off the scale with objects in the stroke menu should help with that. I scale the group and rotate it, making sure it stays within my artboard. The main element should not overlap because it would mean that we have to have a part on either side of the document to make it seamless. So at the moment I just keep everything inside the artboard. The next element will be a simple flower. Again I start with a circle, convert it to a curve, move the bottom node, duplicate and mirror it. I then take the two shapes, duplicate and rotate them until I get my flower. I add a circle in the center, select all the elements and make them a compound. I copy and paste one element from the flower and use it as decoration for the teardrop shapes. I use the pen tool to add detail and connect the elements I have on the screen so far. 
This is the finished stroke and the thread that will make it look like a lace pattern. With these lines I will cross the border of the artboard. In order to make it seamless they need to reappear on the other side. So something that is going out on the right needs to come back in on the left. One of the easiest ways to do that is to adjust the nudge setting in the preferences to match the artboard. I go into preferences tools and the nudge distance is down there and I set it to 1024 pixels. That way if I move something pressing the curve key it will move by exactly that distance. Duplicating those two lines, pressing the cursor key to the left moves them to my left side. I can now shorten them and I will be sure that they will match up. I do that again with this element, making sure that it matches. Seeing I'm adding to this one, I delete the original and work with the newer version from the left side. I continue to add more lines to make it look more intricate. Once I'm happy with my design, I export it to PNG. The setting is already there as 1024 by 1024. I want to export the whole artboard. I name it and save it. This way I have a PNG file of my design. I can now go in to the brushes, select the category I want to put it in and create a new texture intensity brush. Choosing the bitmap from the export, it appears as a stretched. We want it to repeat. I can adjust the size and I adjust the size variance. That way the brush will react to a pressure curve. Let's try out the new brush on a simple line. I use the pen tool to create a straight line and assign the brush to it. I adjusted the widths. It looks all right as long as I don't curve the line too much. Once you go into an extreme bend, the pattern will deform. Another common issue with textured brushes is the orientation. If I assign this brush to a circle, you can see the pattern goes inside rather than outside. In order to fix that, I convert the circle to curves and reverse the curve. That way the node orientation is reversed and the brush flips. You can avoid that by creating a second version of the brush, flipping the PNG images vertically and create an inside and an outside version of your brush. I also noticed that the brushes get deformed. Sometimes it helps to turn the scale with object on, adjust the width of the stroke to alter the number of images that get repeated along the curve. When applying an effect to the brush, it'll be affecting the brush as well as the fill. My inner bevel that I'm assigning to the circle at the moment will affect the brush. If I zoom in, you can see that the brush is shaded, but only shaded until it reaches the circle. If I turn the circle off to be transparent, you'll notice that the whole lace pattern becomes beveled and not just the area outside the fill. One of the main reasons I love to work with vectors is they are so flexible and easy to edit. If I duplicate my artboard and create a second design, I can just keep parts that I like and reuse them, scale them, rotate them, mirror them and quickly create a different design altogether. I take the flower from the first design, make it the centerpiece of the second design, scale it up and change the fill to an outline stroke and then 
add details to it to make it a new design really quickly. The five flowers will be the main design and now I'll just use the pen tool to connect them and get that fabric thread look happening that makes the lace design. I should have centered it first. I add more lines to connect the bits that feel disconnected. You won't just have an odd line in your design that should be connected to something. I reuse one of the elements from the flower for additional design. It helps keep your piece consistent when you reuse a lot. It might sound lazy to duplicate, but repeating elements give it that look of one design rather than a lot of pieces put together. Once I'm happy with the design, I save the PNG give it a new file name in order not to overwrite because it takes the name from the document so make sure you give it a new file name if you have more than one image in your document once i have the png i create a new brush new texture intensity brush use the new pattern and set the size and the size variance, set it to repeat, and there it is, a new lace pattern done in little to no time based on elements that were created prior. The more elements you have already created, the faster it is to create new variations. I will stop right here and let you play with it. Don't restrict yourself to squares if you want something longer, wider, go for it. Look at references if you aren't sure. Play with simple shapes and build up from there. Use variations, experiment and just have fun with it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, turn on the notifications, leave a comment and let me know what you want to see on my channel and I hope to see you again soon.